Hey, it's Craig Syracuse. We're in Times Square, the center of the universe. It's where the ball drops. It's where everything happens. But it's also where Good Morning America has their show, the number one morning show in the United States of America. We're going to go inside and sit down with Eddie Luizzi, who is a stage manager. But he's no ordinary stage manager. He's the stage manager to the stars. Let's go inside, guys. Eddie, thank you so much. I want to thank you for you know putting this together. This has been an amazing morning so far. You're welcome. You know, as everyone can see, we're on the set of Good Morning America. This is, I mean, nice. the number one show in the country. You know, throughout the world. Morning I mean, show, number one morning. Number one show. morning show. Have yeah, you there are some good nighttime shows too. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I mean, we did the intro outside, and we said stage manager to the stars. Mm. I mean, this is a title that I don't know if you came up with the title, but we're going to go with stage manager I'll, to I'll the tell stars. You, I'll tell you. But let me ask you, I mean, morning show, this is an early day, early call, in case people are not familiar with. What time do you get up in the morning to head over to Good Morning America? Okay, so I live an hour north of here, okay? So three days a week, I wake up around 2.30. Two days a week, I wake up at 2 a.m. There is a perpetual Eucharistic Adoration Chapel where I live. So those two days that I get up at 2, I actually go there, and I'm there a full hour. So I say some prayers, I read, and I meditate. The other three days, I just stop by and say a quick little prayer for my family, my friends in the spirit, my friends in the universe, for my coworkers. And then the stage manager to the stars, before we get any further, Eddie Lenzo, my dear friend Eddie Lenzo, who's a jib operator here, he always jokes around, Eddie Luisi, stage manager to the stars. <laughs> so now I put that on certain things. So thank you, Eddie. Well, I mean, if you look around, which we'll, we'll see these photos, and I've seen a lot of them online. I mean, you have Kermit the Frog. You have you know, huge <laughs> celebrities here. I think the only one I'm really jealous about is Kermit the Frog. I've never met Kermit the Frog. And I go back to the very first Kermit the Frog. What was it, Jim Henson? Jim Henson? Yeah. yeah. It's amazing, too, the photos. Because, like, you know, it's funny. I got my first start in this building as well. It's 2004, working with a lot of these guys that are here cool. at doing the Insider. So to come back here, for me, it, it means a lot. And for you, I mean, you're here every day. You've been here, what, 33 years? I've been at GMA 33, 33 years. 33 years, yeah. that's started amazing. Started uptown. We started when GMA was part of ABC Entertainment, and then it, it got took over by ABC News. Did you so ever think you would be here for 33 years? Yes and no, okay? The reason why I stayed here as a stage manager for 33 years is because I'm a family person. I know Monday through Friday, I get out around 11, 12 o'clock, and I could be home for my family. As a stage manager, I don't get phone calls, I don't get texts, I don't get emails. I do a professional service. I come in, I do my job, and I'm left alone. So kind of figured I'd be here for the long run because I liked that. And several people gave me opportunities. And I've directed small stuff on the side. But I want to direct stuff like this, you know, two people. Take one, take two, take one, take You're, two. I, mean, I don't want like a crazy show like this. This is like remotes and dances. Yeah. And, and like you said earlier, you have this routine. And having routines, I mean, I travel a lot lately. And I've noticed that when I don't have my routine, when I don't listen to podcasts, go to the gym, meditate, it takes me off. You know, I become distracted. And so why do you think, well, why is it important to have the routine, especially the routine you have where you, you do adoration, you pray, you meditate? Why is that important? I think it keeps me grounded. I love God. And for me, God is part of my life all the time. I'm constantly talking to God. I'm constantly praying. When I see different people, I bless different people quietly. And I do have a, a very long ritual. You've you know? met, I think, every single person that's ever, I mean, you met everyone I, that's I, been on I the met, show. I met a bunch of people. Yeah, there's a few people I still haven't met. But, you know, I always say I'm honored and blessed to work at this show. Also, I've met so many people, and a lot of them I become friendly with, mm -hmm. and we, you know, we exchange cards, we exchange numbers, emails, and I tell a lot of people out there because I also mentor, and I like to mentor yeah, which high I want to get into and, in the and last college segment. kids. But I say, look, as a stage manager, I can't get you a job, or if you have a record, I can't get it produced, or if you have a book. But I know a lot of people, and through those people, I could connect you. Mm -hmm. There's a dear friend of mine, her name is Joan Bear. She's a young adult author. And she was a guest on Christopher Close-Up, which is a part of the Christophers, a religious show that I used to direct years ago. And Tony Rossi, who's a producer there and an editor, he contacted me once and said, Joan's grandson just graduated college. Could you like chit chat? I said, yeah, let's go out to breakfast. I love to eat. You know, you and I have I had know, lunch I and, know. and <laughs> breakfast many times. 
So we went around the corner and Tony couldn't make it. So Joan, her grandson and me, we sat down, we chit chatted. The first 20 minutes was just all about mentoring and talking about how I could help him with college. Then I told her just what I just told you, what I just told you view is that I can't get you jobs, but I could connect you because I know people. And she leans in really, really close and she goes, you're not a connector, you're a divine appointer. Mm -hmm. You help souls with their divine appointments. And I said, whoa. I said, I never heard that title before. And besides, I was raised Catholic and, and I've been to different churches and Christian and Buddhist. So I continue doing what I do. You know, I continue to, to try to help people. I like it. I mean, you know, whatever gifts we have, right, we're supposed to use them to glorify God. So if your gift is to point people in the right direction, you're using those gifts to help people. And it's when you look back and you say, you know, I met this person and I wasn't ready at that time for maybe for that person to make that connection but it's about the growth, right? It's maybe this person that you've met in a few years from now, maybe you'll be able to help and maybe you said something, but it's all a journey. You have to have patience, right? You have to have patience in life. Let's say this is the ground, right? And here's the seed and it's grown, it's grown, mm -hmm. it's grown and it's right about to grow out. But a lot of people stop, yep. they, right? They get discouraged. So just keep on doing what you're doing. You know, uh, we're going to yep. talk later about friends in the spirit. You know, I got the logo. Oh, the I didn't, know, I didn't notice the T-shirt. Yeah, mean, I got the T-shirt that you're wearing a blazer. Because everyone, once you put the blazer on, everyone's like, "What are you wearing a blazer for, Eddie?" <laughs> I never wear a and blazer. And we find out that's your what your blazer you wore at your wedding. Twenty-one, 21 years, years ago. Years it doesn't ago. close. Later on, I'll stand up. But look, it doesn't close. Amazing. <laughs> But so just one quick question before we take a break. So, uh, you know, I mean, you've been here, you meet all the stars and all that, but when you go home and you tell people where you work, do they joke around with you and say, that's not work, Eddie? I mean, because you love your job. Do you consider it a job? Do you consider it a vocation? Do you consider it a calling? What do you consider this? I try not to go home and tell people I work Good Morning America. I do have a Facebook page, so people that want to follow, and that Facebook page just shows behind the scenes of Good Morning America. I try not to put my family, I try to stay more business than personal. So people will reply that way. But chit-chatting and conversations, I don't really talk about Good Morning America. Um, there are some people that know me that say, oh, you have a cool job and this and that. What I tell people, and this is interesting, and you know, I have a great crew here and, and a lot of these guys are top-notch and work on top-notch shows. I said, as a stage manager, okay, if you're looking at a ladder of success, okay, let's say here's the bottom, here's the top. I'm somewhere in the middle as a stage manager, okay? But through the years, I met a lot of people just starting out as assistants, as interns, that have elevated. Now I know presidents, vice presidents, executive producers, on-air talent. But I stayed there because I want to devote myself to my faith, my family, my friends. And I wasn't as successful as those people. So in my eyes, as a stage manager, I'm not that successful. In some other people's eyes, that they think, wow, you work at Good Morning America, you work at Network, you work with all these different people. But I try to be as humble as, as I can and, and not brag when, you know, when I meet people and stuff. Success, we, and you know this, we should never compare ourselves to other people. Success doesn't work that way. Success is fulfilling your original assignment that you know, Jesus Christ gave us. And I think you're doing that. I would, you. you know, I really do. We're gonna take a quick break, Eddie. We have a lot more to talk about. Okay. We're on live on GMA set, the Subway set, sitting down with Eddie Luizzi, Stage manager to the stars. Be right back. Hey, friends of Walk in Faith. I'm Eddie Louise. I'm the stage manager. Good morning, America. You want to come in and see behind the scenes? Come on in. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Luisi, could you please turn the lights on in the back, please? Yes, we could do that for I you, Robert. That. If Michael wanted it, nada. But for you, <laughs> see what I'm talking about? <laughs> be honest with you, I don't know what you do because you seem just kind of standing around half the time. Yes, sir. You just, then you put, you laugh at just in the background of your broadcast. I'm, I'm trying with people to. People at home going, who is that with that laugh? So I saw your business card you made up. Eddie, Luke Casey. <laughs> Luke Casey? Luke Casey. Luke he doesn't Casey, even know Lucy. my last name. Uh, yeah, I messed it up. <laughs> I don't know. Hold on. Mr. Hold on. Early. Uh, I like, You're I still shorter. Stay down here. I love you, Mike. Okay. You, are one, tell you, right you now, are a wonderful person. Every Michael day Shanghai. I come down here, I mess with this guy. You have such a festive face. Every morning you make us happy. Thank you, Michael. 
Renee Zellweger. Rainbow. Quiet, please. We're tracking. We're going one, Robin, on two. George, now that that severe weather that is uh, a threat that's hitting the southwest overnight, torrential rain, hail, a tornado. So let's go back to Jim. Good morning to you, Robin. North of Phoenix is where this image comes from. And then look at this from Wisconsin back to Kansas. Dingy winds, but there is an elevated tornado threat in northern Iowa up to Rochester, Minnesota that we'll have to be watching, Michael. Coming up, Okay. So now I hold the elevator for them. Robin and Michael take the elevator. George walks. <laughs> yeah, George, he walks. George, I told him that you take the stairs. The other guys I take the, take the elevator. Anyway. That's right. <laughs> it's a hey, Lucas, Lucas, everybody. How are you? Come on in. But we had your face on TV. Maybe you have a radio, a Thank TV, you, Mike. some kind of voice. Michael goes here. that way, Robin goes that way. Yeah. That's fine, guys. So I just hang here and give Robin time cues. That's my job. Excellent job. You give me more than time cues. You give me hope. I do. You do. Hope, encouragement, hope, love, encouragement, faith, love, blessings. No, one wait. minute, darling. Okay, one minute. You gonna go out? We're ready. All right. Get in the mood. Get in the mood. All right, Robin. All right. Woo! Welcome back. We're here at the Subway set of Good Morning America with Eddie Louisi, stage manager to the stars. I love the way that flows. Thank but you. But you have a lot of titles. I actually have to look at this. I couldn't memorize it. Okay. Perpetual Eucharistic Adoration Guardian. This is the first time I've heard of it. it was yesterday. A musician, a worship leader, a thought leader, a motivational speaker, a father, a husband, and a friend to me. You do everything. I'm in your Facebook morning group. In the beginning, I was like, why am I part of this? And then there's certain days. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, but there's certain days and I'm like, you know, just reading comments and how it really affects and touches people means a lot. I want to ask you now, we spoke about, you know, we're at GMA, you know, we're both spiritual, faith-based men, and are you able or do you bring faith to work every day? Do you keep it separate? How do you use faith throughout the day? I try to bring faith just by my personality. I try to be respectful. I try to be nice to people, honest. If you're a, a follower of Jesus, I try to bring the characteristics of love, patience, kindness, hope. To people and if people see my tattoos right you saw earlier i have the blessed tattoo i have a forgiven tattoo if people see something like that and they want to start a conversation i will take it wherever they want to take it but i won't preach or i won't mention I god at work and i think that's important and there's one thing that i work towards and i think all of us should is to become holy right to not be a contradiction and it's what you said like when you are outside the way you treat people regardless of who they are the parking garage guy someone that's an intern or someone that's the president we treat them all the same and we make sure that they see how jesus christ lives in us through our actions not just our words and it's interesting you said we try to be holy and i'm from the knowledge that we are divine, we have divine in us, we are holy. Maybe in our humanity, we try to be holy, right? We're not human beings having spiritual experiences, we're spiritual beings having human experiences. So I try to live by that. And um, this is just a shell. This gets old and wrinkly, but uh, the spirit is, is perfect. It's beautiful. Were you always religious? Were you always sort of, you know, this connected to your faith or did something happen? Did you change over time? I grew up Catholic. I grew up in Astoria, Queens. I was your typical altar boy back in the 70s. I played guitar in the folk mass. Then I moved up to Rockland County and I went right to the church and I volunteered. So for many years, I volunteered playing guitar at church, but it was never really spiritual. It took a spiritual turn. Um, after I was married, I had a two-year-old son and I was going through a separation. I went to my local pastor and I said, look, I need to make some extra money. I can't pay the bills. And he said, I really can't hire you. So back in those days, because I'm 60 years old, I went through the yellow pages <laughs> and I, I found all the Catholic churches in Rockland County and I called them all up and I said, I'm looking to lead music because I, I knew back in those days, a leader of song or cantor and organist got paid, but usually us guitar people or volunteers. So I said, I could lead song on a guitar and I'm looking to get, you know, as a job. And I got hired in two churches. So once I got hired, and now I'm up front by myself on guitar, I said, I need to take this to another level because now I'm not just in a group rocking out and stuff like that. So then I started reading more. I took classes, I went to seminars, I started writing. So that took me. So out of the, the divorce, separation, despair, the hardship, God, you know, 
took over and started enlightening me. And then this is more, more to my path and journey, you know? It's like I'm more of a spiritual person now. I'm still in the Catholic faith as a musician, but I'm open to all religions, spiritualities. So, I mean, was there a time throughout this journey where you started to doubt your faith or question? Never. Never? Never doubted my faith. And I've consistently been a church musician since age 12. So that's what, 48 years? Consistent. And uh, no. And I've been through divorce, I've been through family illnesses and problems with money and a lot of different things. And never once do I get mad at God. And, and never once will I go back and change anything because everything that happened in my life has made me who I am right now. And if take one thing away, I wouldn't be the same person. And I don't know what that person would be. You know, we're sitting here talking on a set of Good Morning America. We don't know. There could be one person that this one thing that yeah. we said touches their lives. Or you don't know, you know, how many people are going through something really bad. And then we tell them about the love of God, the love of Christ. Exactly. And it's like, turn them around. Yeah, right. It, it just takes one person. I was in Israel recently and a woman said, you know, when you're interviewing these people and you're learning about them, we're learning about them as well. And I didn't realize, like, as I only, I'm thinking about you and I, I'm not thinking about the people that are watching the show that we could potentially affect. Because like you said, it's one person. If we could save or help one person or say something, because it's not about us. It's about what you and I might say that could have an effect on that. And, and to be perfectly honest, okay? So we're chit-chatting here. So you have viewers, and hopefully there's something that we're saying that could touch their lives and help them. But you're, you're an executive producer and anchor of this show. When you love this show to succeed and do better, of course. you're on the set of Good Morning America. Robin and Michael and George live at 8 <laughs> o'clock. I know. Turn it's the amazing. cameras on your crew and me. Why are you guys here? So that went on national TV. And then for me, I have this ministry, Friends in the Spirit 111. And all I do Saturday mornings, I have a phone and I talk, hey, greetings and blessings, dear friends of the Spirit. It's Eddie Lou. And I reach two to 5,000 people a week. There's no money coming in. I'm not a Joel Osteen or any, any big type person, but this show is going to happen. I don't know where God's going to mm -hmm. take it. I'm 60 years old. Would I like to retire now or would I like to start something else, a ministry? Sure, I'm ready. I'm ready. So I continue to do what I do. And this is a blessing for you to come with a, a fabulous professional crew to be on the set. So we're blessed. I agree. And hopefully there's something, just one thing that's a blessing. Yeah, I mean, to for others. me, always my dream for the show has been to to speak openly about faith the way we are. And, you know, I've interviewed a lot of celebrities. I've been around a lot of celebrities, not as many as you and definitely not Kermit. And I've noticed that a lot of them, they say these key words, I'm blessed. It's a blessing. But you can't always, in the secular TV, be able to you know, have a follow-up question. But I want to give them the platform to speak openly about their faith, their journey of faith, whatever that faith is, because there is no way that they got there on their own. That's always been the dream for the right. show. Now, just one quick thing. Now, you also work in New Jersey, too, right, at, at a church in New Jersey? I used to volunteer at a church in Jersey. How do yeah. you do all this, though? Like, how do you juggle you know, from the ministries to Facebook to working here. How do you juggle it all and why do you? Because most people would say, you know what, Eddie, you do enough. You're 60 years old. Time to just slow down. What keeps you motivated and why do you do it? I like to help people. I like to do service. You know, I, I think one of the reasons we're put on this earth is to help others. When I do my, my video Saturday mornings, I accumulate. I have a purple folder and I just accumulate things during the week that, that have touched me. And then either Friday afternoon or Saturday morning, I wake up and I kind of piecemeal it and I do it. Amazing. It takes a half hour, 45 minutes. In my prayers, when I ask or talk to God, I always say your will mm -hmm. because God knows, you know, all the outcomes and stuff. At least I believe that. I believe it. I'm old enough to remember the Twilight Zones. And, and, and there was an episode where a person asked for a certain thing and they get exactly what they want, but then there's all this other stuff that's really, yeah. really, really bad. So it's like, you know, God, make me a millionaire, or God, make me this, or make me that. Then you have all these people knocking on the door, hey, Ed, could you borrow, yep. you know, can you this? Or, you know, then I have to hire security guards and this and that. Yep, so it's that's, like, that's, your yeah. will, you know what's best for me and, and the my timing. family. It's all about the timing, too. When yep. you're ready, if it's meant to be, if it's part of God's will, it will happen. Right. Eddie, let's take a quick break, so I have a few more questions. Okay. Be right back with Eddie Luizzi, Stage manager to the stars.
Hello, social friends. Hi, Hi Eddie. Hi. We so, just, we just tweeted about you. Oh, that's right. I was on regular TV. You were on regular TV. <laughs> My fellow stage managers do all the work while I have like a little seed break, nut break. This note is from my social team, these young ladies here. Yeah. You are the nicest and best human ever. We love you, social team. <laughs> because they won an award and I wrote congrats, love Eddie. And then they wrote that to me. Yeah. And you guys been so. working with Eddie for how long? Um, two years and one year. There was like one word or one phrase. I just say like, just friendly. Like sun, sunshine. Welcome. Sunshine? Yeah, sunshine. Sunshiny, I guess, would yeah. be the best term. So if you were tweeting it or you put it on Instagram, what would the hashtag be? Um, oh God. He puts a good and good word in America. Um, that's great. Yeah. 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 I like mm -hmm. that. He always calls us his social friends. I know. Every nice morning he says, hi, my social friends. He's great. We have a Facebook group and he always like posts in it. You forget how long he's been here and then I'll post a photo of like him and Diane Sawyer when she was an anchor or something. And you're like, oh wow, like Eddie's, Eddie's like a part of history at GMA. Like, he's I like love a to look legacy. at his photos too, when he had hair and everything. Oh my God, I know. It's like, who's this it's crazy. It's Amazing. like Eddie, that's you. Hello? No, it's really insane. Um, no, he's just super nice, and we love him. So now the rest of the show is a one-on-one -on -one interview. So since we have four stage matches, I get a little break. Do you want me to show you around this area a little bit? Okay, so this is the green room, if you haven't seen the green room already. So this is where certain guests stay. The crew early in the morning hangs out here also, and we do some live shots. So I think they're set for a live shot a little later. Let's go behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. You know somebody. You're on now. Let's go, oh my gosh. So this is all different offices and stuff. So the EP's room there. This is where we feel where we uh, we fool the people. So we actually sit here, and it looks like we're downstairs, but it's just a TV screen, and it you know, and it shows the downstairs stuff. So we actually do promos inside that room. This is the big hair and makeup room. If you want to look at it later, um, and this is all kind of like a horseshoe. So if you ever come here, you ever get lost, it's just a big horseshoe. Hello. Oh, sorry, guys. Restrooms are down there. Ladies on the left, men on the right. That's it. That's behind the scenes of Good Morning America. So I'm going to go back to the set. Welcome back. I'm with Eddie Louisi, stage manager to the stars. Dun, 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 dun. I love saying that. I'm going to say it all day. But uh, just real quick, I mean, you mentioned briefly the t shirt, which we're going to show again. I mentioned which, it several times. Several times. It's like a plug. <laughs> oh, by the way, can you tell me a little bit more about the t shirt? Friends in the Spirit. Friends in the Spirit 111 is a ministry I started. I started it online three, five years ago. Saturday morning, I would send out an email every Saturday morning to around 500 friends. And a lot of those friends were church friends, TV friends. Robin Robert is a dear friend in the spirit. And I would just copy paste different stories, reflections, poems. Anything that came to me that I liked, that touched me, I would send it out. So eventually, I wasn't on Facebook. So I went on Facebook. I said, I want to expand this. I want to try to reach more than just the 500 people and strangers, people I don't know. So I tried to do a Friends in the Spirit on Facebook, but I couldn't until I did my own Eddie Louisi page. Mm. It's kind of, you have to have one thing first. So I did the Eddie Louisi page, and that was more GMA and, and photos with celebs and stuff like that. So I eventually did Friends in the Spirit, but there was another group, so I added the 111. And 111 in a spiritual world, it's just you're ready for divine, you know, for divine intervention, for things to happen, for change in your life. Somebody used the 111 as the Holy Trinity. So I said, okay, I didn't think about that, but that's cool. So then I started doing it on Facebook, but I was doing the same thing, copy pasting, and I get 10, 20 people. But on my GMA page, when I'm like, hey, is Eddie Louise ever said a good morning, Mary, whatever, I'm getting three, 400 people. So I'm saying, I don't know if they like the set or they like the face. You know, I am Italian, you know, Italiano. <laughs> we didn't realize that. <laughs> so the Friends in the Spirit, I start doing videos and all of a sudden I'm getting several hundred people. So I realized that I need to be on camera and I need to talk. So I still had the pages, but I would read certain things and then I would put in my two cents. And like I said, now after I do the video every Saturday morning, I send it out to other religious and spiritual groups so they could share it. And if everybody shares it, I get two to 5,000 reach. 
So it's like, I'm grateful. Eddie, so, you know, during, when we were here for a few minutes, we had the opportunity to sit down and talk to a few of the people that worked here at GMA, and Robin Roberts was one of them, and she had wonderful things to say about you. I asked her for one word that best defines Eddie, and it went into a monologue. <laughs> so take a look at this. We're going to take a look at the video. If there's one word that best describes Eddie, what would it be? Blessing. Blessing. He's a blessing. He's, a, he's blessed and he's a blessing. Great laugh. I love how he and Michael go at it every single morning. Consistent, the joy that he brings. Is that more than one word? It's hard, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard to bring more than, than one word with, with Eddie, but couldn't now imagine coming into the studio and him not being here. So what do you think? Loved it. Love what she said. Love Robin. I'm blessed. I'm blessed to have you as a, a friend and a co-worker. Thank you. Is there something that you think about every day, whether it's a reference in the Bible, a quote, what is it that you sort of lean on or use on your daily basis? Or do you have multiple ones? I have multiple ones, but I love daily word by unity. I get that when I come to work, I go right on my computer and I go right on that and I, there's a reflection, it's fabulous. Last question, if there, you know, the people watching, some of the audience members, if there's someone out there, you know, whether they doubt their faith, they're a believer in Christ, they're not a believer in Christ, they're concerned about their future, whatever inspirational words that you could share with them in this moment, what would you say to them? I believe in God. I believe God is love. I believe do unto others as you want unto you. Eddie, if people want to find out more about you, do you have a website? No, when you send an email, there's a list, so maybe you can mention <laughs> one or two. Well, I think the best, the best thing is Friends in the Spirit 111 on Facebook, because that's the one that I'm really nurturing. I had a, a website, and it's still around. It's uh, fencescomingdown.com. Um, and I don't really update that a lot, but there's some background, and there's some prayers, and I have some of my music. I'm also a musician, so they could check that out. But uh, I like Friends in the Spirit Friends 111 on Facebook. So we advise everybody to follow Eddie, watch him on GMA. Eddie's a great friend, a follower of Christ. Eddie, it's been a pleasure to be here. This has been a wonderful experience for all of us to come back to where we sort of all started our careers at GMA. Thank you so much, Eddie. It's been a pleasure. God bless you very much. Hope you enjoyed today's episode of Walk in Faith. Always remember, you have the ability to inspire and evangelize through your words and actions. Till next time.